So you want to make your first user interface, but you don't know what to do, and it's going something like this. Hit it, Jack! Why? Why must life be so hard? Don't worry, give me 15 minutes and you'll know exactly what to do. My name is Colin, I'm a Python programmer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your first graphical user interface with the GUI building package PyQt5. Now a quick heads up for newer programmers. You really need to have a basic understanding of object-oriented programming to be able to make a worthwhile GUI. This is because, as you'll see, user interfaces are typically built as an integrated set of objects. For example, the main window of your project is an object, and attached to that are objects such as buttons, text, labels, timers, progress bars, and any number of other widgets that comprise a finished GUI. So if you're not that far along, go familiarize yourself with classes and objects. All right, so let's make the GUI, open up the terminal of your IDE, and type pip install pyqt5, and you're just gonna wait for that to download. When that's finished, we're ready to build our project. So how will we approach it? For a simple GUI, I suggest that you conceptualize the project as four main parts that will keep both your code and your thinking very organized. Part one is to create a main window for your GUI. It starts as an empty window, like a blank canvas, upon which you'll build out your application. This is an easy step accomplished with just a few lines of code. Part two is to create the content of the GUI. You're going to write code that adds widgets to the blank main window, such as buttons, text, media players, input fields, and other elements that the end user will interact with. You'll also style your application. You can use pictures and other media, color, you can load sound effects, really anything you want. Part three is to code the GUI's actions. Widgets are worthless unless you tell the program what to do when the user interacts with them. What will happen when a button is clicked? Uh, what's going to happen when the user slides your scroll bar? Nothing at all until you program the GUI to take action in response to user input. Finally, part four is to create a function that runs the application. This is another easy step accomplished by a few lines of code. Now that we have that laid out, let's begin with our import statements. Uh, we're going to start with importing sys, which we will need for one line of code later. We will also go ahead and import from pyqt5.qt widgets two classes that will help build the bare bones of the GUI, and those are Q main window and Q application. Now we'll add more as we build out the rest of the GUI, but that's a good starting point. Now let's build the main window. We're going to start by defining a class. Uh, call it my window for now, and that's going to inherit from Q main window. We're going to initialize our new class and, of course, initialize our super class, Q main window. So, what has that done for us so far? It's very simple. The my window class is going to be used to create our own unique GUI. But in order to get that far, we need to first inherit Q main window, which is a class used by PyQt5 to create blank window objects. That's our starting point, a blank window. And from there, in the rest of our class, we'll go ahead and flesh out the rest of our GUI. So that's what those three lines of code accomplish. Just like that, we have a blank window to begin making our user interface. So let's test to see what we have so far. In order to do that, we're going to jump ahead to step four and write the function that will run our application. We will start with defining run underscore app as the name of our function. The first line will be app underscore object equals Q application. And into that, we are going to pass sys.argv. You don't need to worry too much about the meaning of this line. It's just for configuration. Now we'll go ahead and make our GUI object. GUI equals uh, my window. So we've instantiated our GUI class. Now we're going to use the show method on our GUI. It's needed to make it appear on the screen. And finally, type this line exactly like this, sys.exit parentheses app underscore object dot exec underscore parentheses. What that does is allow the program to be terminated upon closing the GUI window. That's all. Now we'll run our app, see what we have, and a GUI appears. Look at that. We have a little window, and it's not doing much, but we'll close it out for now. Step one accomplished. 
Now let's finish our main window and start to add some content. Let's return to our My Window class. All the code we write from this point forward will be inside of our init method. Any content we code must be initialized as the program launches or it simply won't appear in the GUI. The next thing you need to know is the set geometry method. It's used to determine the size and the placement of the GUI on your computer screen. It's also used to determine the size and the placement of many widgets inside the GUI. So it's a very important method to know. Let's use it to change our tiny GUI into a full screen app. Start by writing self.setGeometry. Remember self is referring to our my window object, our GUI. And now pass two coordinates and two dimensions as parameters. Let's use 0, 0, which are the coordinates for the top left of your screen. This is where the top left of your GUI will appear. Next, let's use 19, 20, and 10, 80 as our dimensions. That's our full screen resolution. When we run it, we'll have a full screen app. Of course, you can set your GUI size to whatever you want. I'll now change it to 1000 by 500 pixels just to make it easy to look at at a glance. Optionally, you can also give your GUI a title using the set window title method, pass a string with whatever you'd like the title to be. And when you run the program, that will appear in the upper left hand corner of your GUI. To finalize our main window, let's give it a background color. To do this, we'll use the next important method to know the set style sheet method. Many PyQt5 objects can use this method and it's central to creating the style and appearance of the GUI. This method takes a string as a parameter and the content of that string determines the appearance of the object. Let's make the background of our window blue with string background hyphen color colon blue semicolon. Now we run the program and can see that it's blue. You can add many attributes to an object style sheet at once. Background images, borders, gradients, icons, and many other design elements are available. To add more, you simply separate the attributes in the string with a semicolon and enter the name of each attribute, a colon, and its value. For a list of all the available design choices, just check out the QT5 documentation for the style sheet method online. In honor of Python, I'll change our GUI to a full screen app with a picture of a Python. I'll remove the blue and instead use the string border image colon URL and then give a path to the picture I'm using. Now here's what we have. With our main window finished, it's time to add content and widgets and code actions to make them function. PyQt5 has many classes that create useful widget objects to put on our app. In general, we do this by creating an instance variable for our main window and setting the value to a widget object. This will attach the widget to our window. First, we need some widgets, so add the classes QPushButton and QLabel to your import statement. Next, I recommend creating a function that will contain all of your content and widgets for the GUI. This keeps the code organized. Let's call it add underscore content. Remember, we need to run it in the initialization method of the main window for it to appear. Let's start by adding a few buttons to the main window. We type self.button1 equals QPushButton self. And let's also add buttons 2 and 3. Run the program and what do we see? Definitely not what you expected. Instead of seeing three buttons, you see one small image of the same snake in our background. What's going on? Well, widgets are given a default size and placement in the top left corner of the GUI. They also take on the style of the window they're attached to until you change it. So what we're looking at are three buttons stacked on top of each other with the same background image. So our next step is to change the size, placement, and background of each button. We start with the set geometry method. Let's lay out our buttons vertically on the right side of the screen and make them 100 by 100 pixel squares. 
Now let's override the Python background using the set style sheet method to give each button a white background. You also need to set the background image value of each button to none. Otherwise, the Python background is still the default image of the button and will override our white background. When we run it, we see that our buttons look much better. However, as blank squares, their purpose is confusing, so let's use the set text method to create the message click on the buttons. We run the program and can see that the buttons now have the word click. Now let's give the buttons an action to perform when pressed. To do this, we need to code three methods containing unique instructions and connect them to each button. We can simply define methods button1 underscore clicked, button2 underscore clicked, and button3 underscore clicked. In a moment, we'll add instructions. First, we connect each button to its method by using clicked.connect and the name of the method without its parentheses. Now that all our buttons are connected to a method, let's code some instructions. Let's make our GUI background change to new different snake pictures with a press of each button. To do that, we simply update the style sheet of our main window in each button clicked method. Clicking button 2 will change the picture to a rattlesnake, clicking button 3 will change the picture to a king cobra, and clicking button 1 will change the picture back to the python. Now I'll add the path to each picture. Also, our methods have an extra indent. Let's bring them back one. This is a good place to mention that while all the widgets and content of your GUI run under the main windows initialization method, the action methods do not. Uh, after all, the content of the GUI needs to load upon launching the program, but the methods are activated later by the user. One last thing, let's change the text of button 1 to Python, button 2 to Rattlesnake, and button 3 to Cobra. Now let's test our buttons. Look at that, our GUI is functioning. Clicking each button changes the snake picture. Let's add a finishing touch. I've pulled a small description of each species of snake from Wikipedia and placed them in strings. The text should appear along with the picture of each snake when their respective button is pressed. The easiest way to add a place for text is with a label. So let's create one with self.label equals QLabel self. We'll use set geometry to create a moderately sized label in the bottom of the GUI. We'll set the text to the Python description as a default since that's the picture that opens when the GUI first starts. We'll give the text a different color to make it pop on the screen. Finally, we'll tell the style sheet not to set the background to the duplicated snake picture. The label will now act like a transparent text box. I'll quickly mention, however, that you can add images, backgrounds, and other style elements to labels in your own projects. We run the program and can see that the text has appeared on the GUI. However, it is small and ugly. Let's change the size and font to make it presentable. To do this, we'll import the class QFont from the PyQt5.QTGUI module. This creates objects that represent fonts. We can give a font object features like size, color, and font style, and then apply the object to our label. Let's make a regular variable called font and set the value to a font object. Next, we use set family to pass the name of our font and set point size to size it. Now let's return to our label and apply our font with self.label.setFont font. Now let's check the label. Much better. The last thing to do is make the rattlesnake and cobra descriptions appear with their image. For this, we simply return to our button clicked methods and update the label with the correct string with every button press. We'll also adjust the text color and label placement based on where it will look best on each picture.
Let's test it. As you can see, the correct description of each snake appears along with its picture when the button is pressed. That's where I'll end this tutorial, and it's my hope you apply the concepts I've introduced to create some stunning graphical user interfaces. If you'd like to advance your programming knowledge with crystal clear concepts and precise step-by-step -step instructions, I invite you to subscribe to my new channel and drop a comment regarding what material you'd like covered. Thanks, and goodbye for now. Yeah, he's done.